Yeah. No. Good to go? Are you recording? Okay. Thank you for coming to the session about the Stewardship Working Group. How many of you went to the uh, Cross Project session earlier today? Okay. Yay. Those of you who didn't go to the Cross Project session, what are you expecting to get out of this session? <laughs> shout. Yeah, shout it out because we don't have microphones for all of you. I figure a summary of what happened in the Emerald. Okay. And then okay. maybe some more stuff. Okay. Someone, yeah, so someone just said they wanted a summary of what happened in the earlier cross project session um, and maybe some extra stuff if we have time. Anyone else? Anything the TLDR, else? as it were. Okay. So you guys are here to hear these four uh, folks talk. So in general, I like to do as little as possible. So after this introduction, I'd like you to engage with the panel and the panel to engage with you and I'll just shut up. Works? Okay. So with that as a starting point. Um, what I am going to do is kick off a couple of questions and then let you engage with the panel. The first one is for Colette. Would you tell us what the stewardship stuff is all about? Sure. Um, so uh, I started having conversations about the sticky people problems of OpenStack with a bunch of people in the leadership positions, various ones, uh, two or three years ago. Um, and uh, when I started doing research around external models of leadership um, that we might be able to sort of look at and learn from uh, within the community, one of the first things that stuck out to me was servant leadership. Um, and so, uh, quick recap of servant leadership for anyone who doesn't know what servant leadership is, I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a YMCA thing here. So there's a triangle, dance. the triangle with the like pointy thing at the top, um, is a traditional corporate model of leadership structures that starts with a CEO at the very top, and then below the CEO is like an executive layer, and they sort of serve at the pleasure of the CEO, and then below them are kind of managers of frontline workers, they serve those executive groups that are in theory detailing strategy and all of these things for them. And then the frontline workers and then the customers are at the bottom of the pyramid, I guess, is how you look at it. Um, in servant leadership, the servant leadership model flips that triangle uh, on its head and it says that the, the sort of top layer, the people who are in charge, as it were, are the customers and the frontline folks. And the managers are in place to serve the frontline folks who are talking to customers and serving them every day. And below the managers are executives who are there to serve managers, frontline customers. And then finally, the CEO serves everyone. And they're at the bottom. So when I saw that, it struck me that that corresponded really interestingly to some of the leadership models that I had seen at OpenStack, um, largely because we come from a ton of different companies and you know why why on earth would somebody from a different com company listen to a PTL from another company well it turns out that's because they're sort of serving their project in this role um, so uh, so that's a quick explanation of servant leadership um, this the stewardship working group came out of a kind of leadership training that revolved around that model of leadership um, and uh, we thought, well, if we want to start tackling some of these people problems in OpenStack, we should probably start learning the language and understanding what models we have internally and, and sort of propose governance repository changes that reflect our principles and things like that. So um, some of the work we've done recently uh, kind of proves what we're about. So let me we'll play. Uh Musical chairs with a microphone, which, so you talked about leadership models in OpenStack, so, so Terry, would you tell us something about how this relates to the TC, because three of you relate to the TC, the training was most related to the TC, how does this relate to the leadership model of the TC, and what's the connection there? So in, in OpenStack, we end up growing organically a governance model that has, that is pretty close to what 
what a colleague just described, which is uh, we can't really rely on traditional carrot and stick strategy to actually get things done. And uh, that's what what uh, was powerful in, in th those things we learned uh, when we went to that training. Because, uh, I mean, I'm usually very skeptical of leadership training because it doesn't apply at all in open source um, projects. And having kind of a framework where they thought out what it means to invert that pyramid uh, was really interesting because we were basically fumbling in the dark. We, we were like, like trying to do, get things done and trying to uh, push um, the people to walk in the right directions but without any kind of traction. And I think operating under um, a more defined framework helps us really uh, look into the things in, uh, with new new eyes. We realized that we were missing some vocabulary. We realized we were missing some tools, uh, and that that drove um, some of the TC members that attended that training to reconsider the way we've we've been trying traditionally to uh, get things done in OpenStack. Cool. So, so I'll ask the question without the microphone. You can, re I can, re I can repeat. repeat it. I can repeat the question when he asks it. Um, so, Monty, you've been around. Uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, how are some of the problems which maybe what Colette was talking about? What are some of these problems that you've seen? How use do you think? The use the mic for the video, please. We need to listen. Gonna, okay. Okay. okay, fine. So, Monty, you've been around OpenStack for a while. I, You're I have. Say. You have. Great. Um, <laughs> so I got my cue. Um, Colette talked about some of the problems which the people problems. Terry is talking about the leadership structure. What are some of these problems, and how do you think this whole model may be appropriate, and how does it fit in? Where, where do the pieces come together, especially with the TC? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, and, and Terry, uh, Terry mentioned this uh, a little bit in his, uh, his last uh, response, but we have, um, we have a, a, a wide constituency that, that all come from a, a, a bunch of diverse backgrounds, um, and, and most specifically, uh, we are a collection of people who work for um, uh, a, a bunch of different companies that uh, that that may um, may be in competition with each other, um, uh, may be partners with each other, may be partners uh, with each other and in competition with each other. Like there's a great combination of those things, and um, and and we also have a, a different set of. Uh, e even outside of sort of company relationships, either inside of companies or or just across the different uh, use cases that they're doing, we have people trying to run public clouds. We have people trying to run enterprise, you know, private clouds. We've got people doing NFV. We've got people who think that the only thing that you should ever do on clouds are cloud native apps. We have people who think that clouds are really good at doing traditional things on bare metal. Like we have we have a bunch of different viewpoints of the of the world. Um, and in, in, in our world, uh, because we've sort of decided on this inclusive and, and collaborative way to, to do things, um, we, we kind of need to synthesize uh, a, a lot of those different uh, things into, in, in, into a whole. We don't, we're not just saying, yes, we, we in fact do believe that cloud native apps are the only way to do things. Uh, clearly, if you look at OpenStack, uh, we do not believe that. Um, uh, we have not written software that believes that. Um, uh, it, it can do that, but it can also do other things. Um, we have we have humans because uh, we are collect a collection of humans. We have humans who have different uh, goals and, and priorities because we have a lot of them. And we have you know the cycle twenty five hundred humans that that are involved um, that have different primary objectives. Some people are working on this just because they were told to by their boss um, and have have no primary objective other than doing a good job. Some people are are in this um, to to you know to liberate. Uh, liberate humanity from from the shackles of uh, of tyrannical uh, single or single company uh, products. Uh, that would be me. Um, uh, we have we have people who explicitly want to uh, take OpenStack and make billions of dollars with it, selling their their product, um, uh, and and that's just a, a mechanism uh, to them. Uh, we have people who are who are just concerned with uh, what's the um, what's what's an interesting technical solution to a uh, to a problem, um, uh, you know the sort of the sort of JFDI uh, folks, um, and and all of the and, and many more. Like I, I could probably sit here if you give me enough beer and, and come up with you know like a hundred a hundred more types of of those people. And 
and we all of those voices wind up being useful, but in a lot of cases they're in they're in conflict with each other. They have they have different motivations uh, for doing things. Different motivations oftentimes result in different outcomes, um, and and no outcome. or no outcome, <laughs> uh, as God says. Uh, uh, so so these are these are all just the 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 inputs into the into this crazy pie um, that we've got going on. When you combine that with, as Thierry says, we don't. Uh, we don't have some of the traditional tools like uh, uh, we 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 don't. Um, if you were just working at a company, oftentimes you vet the people you hire. Uh, that's a, that's a normal practice. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Uh, we don't get to do that. Uh, you you can fire people. Uh, we haven't figured out how to do that. Um, uh, th these are sort of normal. So we we have to we have to take the the humanity that we've got, um, and and something has to. Has to has to come out of that, and at the end of the day, we we need to produce software that people can make a billion dollars with, that also liberates humans and yeah. is operationally good, and also like like all of these things. So so it, it can't just be about one answer. It's never about one answer in almost every single circumstance. We have to solve five conflicting things uh, at once. Right. So let's let's maybe look at an example where we actually could do this because it seems very good on th on paper. Yeah, that, it always you know, does, doesn't it? The triangle. You're in front of the a triangle, upside down, right way up, whatever. It looks very great, but how do you actually make this work? Okay, where am I gonna? Okay, you. So Doug, tell us how you. Well, how do we? How do we? Uh, how do we just solve that problem? Yeah. Which, which, by the way, is a people pro like we can build write all the code that we want but 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 if people are avoiding each other and running into their own corners and and not working together towards a thing um, it's it's gonna get messy when it does get messy and, and part of the group creation is the realization that we have a lot more people problem than we have technical problems right. and we have a lot of people trying to solve people problems with technical solutions so I, I would and I and I and I want to reiterate that I don't think um, I, d I don't think that that's because uh, we're like incapable of solving the people problems. I, th I feel very strongly that um, that a lot of times people get, for example, elected to PTL uh, and are like told, "Cool, have fun with that," and given no resources to help them figure out what that job means and how to do it well and how to not kill themselves doing it. So, yeah, Doug, I'd like to hear something practical about how to solve it. Right. So, two practical things that came out of that that training and the discussions that we had over the summer uh, were the new goals process for cross-project collaboration and the uh, set of principles that the TC has started writing down. And both of those really came out of the need to better communicate. And I, I think communication is really the fundamental solution to the people problems. Um, so the goals process is organized to communicate the desires of the end users and operators and, and the community as a whole for things that we want all OpenStack projects to do. Um, and there's a, a process that it goes through for selecting things and then we'll pick one or two th items to focus on each cycle, uh, work on those things, talk about what, you know, how we did, how the work went, whether it's complete or not, whether we need to keep going and do, do more work. Um, and then we'll be able to celebrate uh, at the end of each cycle uh, that we did a big thing in that cycle. So the first one this time around uh, to bootstrap the process is, is focused on cleaning up some technical debt, removing some old uh, incubated Oslo code and using the newer uh, libraries. Um, and that, that was selected just because it seemed like it would be an easy one to agree to and an easy one to implement. It would give us some practice with the whole process. Um, and then the other thing that we did uh, this summer was to take the list of principles that we've had sort of internalized the folks that have been doing leadership roles within OpenStack for a while, um, kind of understand each other and work up at, based on the same set of assumptions. Um, and my mantra has always been to write it down. Uh, one of the things that you know really came out of the communication was the need to write stuff like this down. And so um, um, Monty and Thierry started working on writing that stuff down and uh, putting together a list. Um, we all had input into it. There was a lot of refinement and everything. And now that's landed in as part of the governance site. Um, and 
part of the documentation that the technical committee has produced. And that's an evolving list of principles, but it's things like we are one project and we want things to work uh, in a similar way. Um, the the uh, stuff about like elections and, and how uh, one person gets one vote, it doesn't matter how big your contributions are, you don't get more votes and things like that. So, so, so if I heard that correctly, you mentioned, Colette started mentioning communication, you picked up on communication. So it seems like a big part of this is communication. So maybe all of you will start with Terry and then go around. Where do you think this communication thing is today? Where would you like it to go? And how does all of these changes which you have, how are they going to relate to the projects? It's one thing for the TC to lead. It's another thing for them to be able to get the projects to follow. So what changes are you making in the area of communication which might facilitate this? I'm sorry. We did lots of preparation for this thing, and we said, what are we going to ask? But this one wasn't one of those questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the lucky one that has to answer it first. So first of all, it's a good question, I'm right. And <laughs> uh, I mean, communication is hard uh, because it, it's not as if we weren't doing it before. Uh, we publish a lot of things, whether it like, be blog posts or or explanations of, of what we're trying to do, mainly these threads. And we put a lot of resource out, resources out there, but uh, people don't necessarily read or, or read past the subject line. Or, and I mean, in however amount of communication you put out, out there is not enough. You kind of need to put a bit of structure around those uh, communications. So uh, for example, the goals stuff, um, it's it's not as if it's not issues we already recognized as uh, being critical to fix in our community. We all know that Python 3, uh, I mean, Python 2 is going away and we need to migrate to Python 3. Uh, the problem is, unless you expose it as something that uh, we should have a common effort uh, to make progress on, nobody is actually like on a deadline to fix it. So it's always priority two, and in OpenStack, things that are priority two tend not to get done at all because there are so many things that are priority one. And so you had progress. Some some projects did really, really well. Uh, like Victor Stinner has been pushing patches crazy in uh, so many projects to make pro progress on that. But we're, we're at a point where unless you kind of herald that, that, um, that goal, as a common thing that as a community, as the OpenStack community want to achieve together, um, we will not make further progress toward that goal. And so that's what I mean by putting some structure around it. To totally, but then uh, like what I would sort of point out about, not, not to not summarize today's session, but we'll, we'll sort of maybe get to that. But uh, it, to talk about the goal session and how it went yesterday, right? Like what people were bringing up, um, you know, the, the communication in the room largely centered around a lot of people saying, well, you can't make me plus two stuff in my project. How are you going to make me plus two a thing? So I was wondering how you guys, like, did, there, there is this moment of, um, I, I saw a real lack of trust in that communication, right? And a, a real lack of, like, like, everyone's, like, really worried people are going to make them do stuff. And then there's also people being like, well, how are you going to make someone else do stuff for me? Because, man, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> and, um, and, and sometimes those are the same people, and they don't always realize it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what do you guys think about um, sort of that, that space? What so is I, your? There are uh, two sides of that. And just, just a short comment, I think. There's a question of timing. Um, there is a lot of negativity around the developer community right now due to various external factors. Uh, and there is also um, a more uh, traditional resistance to any kind of a top-down mandate. So there are like two, two things. It's also bad timing. It's also we probably did not get the communication completely right. Uh, and, and so we're like imperfect beings, obviously. Um, there's a there's a thing that came out in the in the earlier session that that um, it resonated with me partially I think because I said it so I'm just gonna uh, uh, that that must make it be an accurate thing um, but but if, if we if we think about that inverted pyramid and, and what we're what we're theoretically doing here um, I think part of the problem like Thierry just said there's traditional pushback against sort of the top down uh, uh, top down edicts um, except that these aren't actually supposed to be that um, because we are the especially the way that our, our sort of governance works we're 
we're a, we should be a representative, uh, like a funnel point of, of, the, of the things that, that already exist in the, in the community. And rather than saying, hey, everybody in a, in a dark room, we decided that Python 3 is important. Um, what actually, we haven't figured out how to frame this well for people, and I think this is one of the one of the failures. But I think that that hopefully, if we identify it, we can we can move forward. Um, is is that that actually, in what we should be saying is that we're we sit we happen to sit in a position where where we've got visibility into uh, across across the OpenStack uh, community and ecosystem, and we would like to reflect back to everybody that that this is an important thing not not that we would like to make it an important thing but we would we would like to surface for people that there there are there are some important things to do that need to be named and and pointed out and and as rep, as your representatives like as the, as the people that you've you've elected to kind of watch over things we've we've noticed something uh, and when we'd like to we'd like to we'd like to surface this in a way that is potentially uh, actionable by all of you. So rather than saying, hey, you all need to do this, and then people are like, well, how are you going to make me do that? It's like, actually, we're, we're sort of pointing out a thing that, hey, that hey, we but, should, but, but, you know. But let's hear quickly from Doug and Colette, because I have a question for the audience, which I think is going to relate to this. So let's talk about the communication thing very quickly, and then I'll yeah, push the I, question to the audience. I think my impression of that session yesterday was a little more positive. There were a few very vocal people, but it was a big room. And there were a lot of quiet people who seemed just sort of to be nodding in agreement. And I don't mean agreement. to say like, uh, it wasn't positive. I actually right. think it was a deeply awesome session. Um, but but I, I also think the fact that we proposed that Python 3 goal and that failed to be approved is the process working correctly. Yep. Because mm -hmm. the, it, it triggered the communication about how we thought we were in a certain state and we're not in that state and there's some other things that have to happen before yeah. we can actually take that to the next step. Yeah. Um, and so I count that as a success. I mean, it's frustrating. I wish we had actually been in the state I thought we were in, um, but uh, there's more work to be done and that, ha that work's gonna have to be done and we're working on that, so. Um, and, and to, you know, I started off the, the cross-project session this, mor or this afternoon, this morning, whatever. Morning. I don't know, it's Spain. So um, I, I, uh, I started it off by asking, you know, how many of you in this room have ever had an interaction in code review, IRC, um, in-person design summit session, um, where uh, you've encountered somebody who is really upset and making you feel uncomfortable and kind of maybe being a jerk. Um, and instead of sitting down with them and trying to move through it and, and, and go through it with them, um, get on the same page with them, you've just sort of quietly walked away and avoided them. Show of hands, right. So one of the things that I think is really important is to start talking with one another about and, and create a space where we can talk about how we can move past this stuff together instead of be, be avoidant. Because, you know, uh, it, there's a lot of avoidance in this community culturally and I don't think it helps us. It points to it points to a lack of trust, and we need to rebuild that trust. And part of the the, the like rationale for for uh, splitting the design summit events is also to recreate a, a, a venue for less people to be present, so that you can actually bound with your fellow developers across multiple groups. Because that's something we had in the beginning, and we lost along the way. And and I think it's very difficult to build trust relationship in the middle of six thousand venue where we're like. Like it's first time I I see a few people in a room that I haven't seen yet, and it's like the third day we're here, mm -hmm. uh, and and so it's really really difficult to get that kind of a bonding experience and trust, and we lost that trust, and that the other sign we we saw in that goal room is like no, you won't make me a uh, uh, plus to your patch is is well, you should be agreeing. I mean, you should trust us or me to like if I think it's important and. And you should at least try to understand why I think it's important, or you know, yeah. like natural distrust rather than natural trust. Exactly. When and it's it's one of the 
you know, w one of the pluses to our, our uh, extremely distributed model is that we get to have people from, from all over the world, which means we've, we have, you know, all sorts of interesting perspectives. Um, and it means I get to sit outside by my pool and hack, which is great. Um, uh, but it also makes some, some forms of communication uh, like things can, can come out of, you know, seeing Brian in the, in the front row and a year ago we were all arguing about uh, glance image uploads, right? And in the, in the spec and in, in, the, in the online uh, discussions about it, it felt very tense. And then we got in the room in Tokyo and are, are able to all look each other in the face and realize that everybody is actually trying to solve the, the same goal and, and it's, it's, it winds up being very easy to, to sort of come to a, to a, a place to, to go, and that, that's, a, that's a specific example of a, of, a, of a thing, but like having that space to be able to, to, to make some, some bonding things then makes further subsequent conversations on the topic easier. So I agree with Thierry, like the, the theory of, of what we're trying to do with the, the, the PTG is amongst the toolbox that hopefully we can, we can use to, to start to, to rebuild the connections, because yeah, I, I've barely seen uh, the, the infra team uh, there are people on the Infra team that I have not seen yet uh, in, 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 in by Wednesday, um, much less random people from other teams, right? So like, so the, the opportunity for me to, to arbitrarily make connections with people that I didn't already have connections with is, is diminished. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that, that with some, some more ability for interaction uh, with, with, our, with our fellow people, we can build some, some, better, some better trust uh, trust relationships, which can then feed into a culture of trust rather than, than the natural distrust. Well, it's more about PTG, but let's stick to stewardship. Yeah. Yeah. How will this group help that? So I, I actually want to throw that out to the audience. How can we help you? Um, because I, like, uh, one of the things that we didn't quite get to in the cross-project session, because I think a lot of it was a little bit about like, um, we're not some, you know, this, this is a group for everyone. It's specifically not just for the TC. We will make recommendations to the TC and talk with them about things, but it's not, it's. The question is, right. how is this group different from the TC? The question is how, yeah. Um, we're devoted to leadership in all its forms in OpenStack. And the TC is a leadership group, right? I mean, I view the TC as like, in, in my mind, one of the first customers we have to deal with <laughs> um, in terms of helping them get through some of this. But there's leadership exists in all places in OpenStack, and it's not even just elected leadership. As you all know, showing up is like 75% of the battle. If you can manage to write an email to the mailing list and get some people to agree with you, that's, that's a thing. Um, so there, every single person who participates in this community is, is a leader. Um, that's a, how it's different. There's a well. There's a thing that, that you said uh, earlier in the in the earlier session um, ab about that that the, the I think you alluded to, um, but to say it slightly differently, the uh, the the the, uh, the stewardship working group uh, it exists to be a resource for other people, not to uh, not necessarily to be a, a another set of people over tossing out edicts and like that, but actually to be a set of people who are interested in reading and learning and, and thinking and, and, and doing that and, and responding. So if, if, there's a, if there's a person with a leadership challenge and they want to come and be like, hey, can you help me figure out how to, how to do this? That's a thing. Um, it's also a, it, it's, a, it, it's extremely important to point out that it's a, uh, it, it is a group comprised of the people who are interested in, in, in working on this. So it is not a subset of, uh, of, of the TC. There are TC members who are participating in it because that, that's a thing that they've uh, they've decided to spend some some energy on. There's also people who are not on the on the TC or in any particular elected uh, role um, who are in it. It's a it's a it's a willing coalition. It's a coalition of the willing, right? Like it's people who want to come and uh, and and uh, examine some of these things and and surface potential tools or approaches um, to people as. As they as they find the, the need for them, so as we come up with things that, that we think are broadly applicable, we'll come to the TC and say, "Hey, we think this is maybe some useful language that that could be used." And the TC may go, "Neat," or the TC may go, "Nope, that is not interesting to us." And those are both those are both fine. It's almost or, like a research org. Or here's a framework for understanding a problem that came up in your meeting last week, right? Yeah. That you might not know about, or but it could help you think about it differently. I don't know. I mean, like something that simple, right? Yeah. 
And um, some of the things that we've already started doing, we've sort of done ourselves because we're in both groups. So the goals thing and the principles things, but that that's coincident because uh, half the people at the leadership yeah, training were not yeah, TC members. It, exactly. So, yeah. So what are some other things which people here in the audience? I yeah, had does to anyone here. else have any ideas? Yeah, I had what do you come think we here should do? So the microphones didn't blow up on me, but are there other things yeah. which you would like this group or you would like help with from the perspective of leadership in OpenStack in general, realizing that this is not specific to the TC? Yeah. I have one question. Like for my management, how 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 can we communicate with like my personal manager that to make sure this issue that is understood at their level, right? Because they're gonna. I think it's not just me, but other management will look in at this and see, ooh, what's going on down there from the outside, and how do we communicate that correctly to people that have you know one of the suggestions right? or the asks from the cross project session was that we put the servant leadership triangle up on like the yeah, openstack.org <laughs> website. Yeah, Which I, I don't think, think is wrong, right? Like, I, I think there is generally a lack of understanding of w how open source works when it's working in a governance model like this yeah. um, and a leadership model like that. So, I mean, do you think that would be helpful? I think so. I'm just not, have I have a published I, I, resource online that, yeah. that gives some of the summary of. I think so. I think so. Because I think it's have to be done carefully so it doesn't, like, because people may already be like, what's going on with an OpenStack and why are they trying to resolve these things? and. Why are if, we trying to solve problems? Right, well, right, Why not well, just let well, them fester? Yeah. <laughs> or, or others, or other uh, type of, of requests, like why aren't you pushing more leadership, like more hard decisions on top of their, those damn developers that don't want it? Or, yes. or the, the opposite, why are you pushing so many decisions? I mean, uh, we've been blamed for both. I think if we are in a situation where we have to make a choice between like too, too much leadership or not enough leadership, it's that we are asking the wrong question. Right. And I think exactly. we are in a model where uh, we, we are facilitators to make the, like, the common, uh, um, basically what Monty said earlier, like, uh, we are in a good place to identify actually things that the majority or uh, the, the consensual group of people think its direction should be doing. And then once we make that truth emerge, it kind of, it's so much easier to just push in that direction. So but if you're, yeah. yeah, there's a thing that, that a similar topic came up in the board TC meeting. Uh, uh, Monday, I guess that was two days ago. Weird. Um, uh, that was that was that. Uh, it, was, it was sort of a, a request that came out of that of, of uh, asking how we can do a better job um, at the at the at the foundation level, the, the the board or the constituent companies to to communicate to the companies better. What does it? So we've got a lot of documentation on how do you become? How does an individual become a OpenStack contributor? Like how how does what's the mechanics of that? But what we don't have a lot of documentation on is um, things that are aimed at the management structure in the company. What does it mean to what does it mean to employ people who are working on OpenStack? How do you if you're if you're crazy C-suite person has decided that all of a sudden your company is all in an open stack and you're like, I don't even know what that is. Like, what, is, what does your life mean? How, does, how do you manage your, your employees who are in, involved in this and, and how, can you, how can you, like, so resources for, for them? So, so honestly, I think that, that from, like, from your question and, and that, like, it's, I'm not sure that anybody has an actual full answer for what that exactly looks like, but that might be something that the, that the stewardship group could work on some ideas yeah. to bring back to the TC, to bring to the board of, hey, so we'd, we'd spent some time thinking about this, and here's some ways in which we can help you, because as the TC, we should be serving you, right? We should be making your life better. How can we help you by, by, by helping facilitate communication up the chain in your, in your yeah, respective I orgs, be, right? I think it'd help and others that have management that is not quite understanding like, yeah, sure. So I think, thanks. I think it'd help me and other people that are managers that aren't quite understanding what's happening down in the OpenStack land for this kind of stuff and uh, helping them figure out yeah, where it's going and what the thoughts are. No, I, I just wanted to second that because one thing I've heard from my managers is that right, there's, there's this model of a benevolent dictator. and. So there's this thought, if we had a benevolent dictator here, we could really get stuff done. Yeah, and, which I don't think and is what I really like to shoot down is I, I so, so there's, this, so be this, yeah. there's yeah. this perception that OpenStack's weakness is that it doesn't have a benevolent dictator, right? And I like yeah. to flip that on its head, which is that its strength is actually that it does not. Yeah. But we need to make explicit why that is, yeah. right? Yeah, because it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. 
yeah. It, it, and but yeah, I think communicating that and and also because because yeah, like I mean, for the love of all that's holy, the the in theory, people had the impression that the that that the TC collectively came to the decision that 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 we should uh, support Python three. Um, which is n not particularly all that, I mean, and like the world exploded and, and people were like, why are you telling me what to do, man? Um, so, so for anybody that, any of the constituent companies that thinks we'd be more effective, I think what all of them actually think is if there's a benevolent dictator, we know who to go squeeze to get our fancy feature that was really important to us in. And what they forget about is that also means a person who's going to be much more empowered to say no to their crazy feature that all of us think is a bad idea in the first place. And um, also so. that, that that will end up killing the diversity of con contributors and contributions. We got two people here. We can Let me just, I, I just wanted to say with the, um, I'm glad you're doing this session <laughs> because I, I read the, your first patch for the, the goals and was just horrified because, <laughs> but, but I, th you. I thought, well, you know, it's, it's the role of the, the TC to show leadership, so I understood that, but I just thought this is gonna be a really hard sell. But, but can I ask as we you went why through were, the whole, what, what were you feeling when you were horrified? Like, what are the things about Well, because it? it was like, you're gonna tell us what to do, and I'm thinking, yeah, good luck with that. And we're gonna get this done by the, you know, by the certain deadline. It was like, yeah, good luck with that too. There was no, so I, I put the comments in, we needed some, to build up some stuff. And then on the patch, you explain, no, no, the idea is that these are organic goals that are going to rise right, up, they, and then we'll help. There's, but I guess my they're point, all, so far, the backlog is there's maybe 10 things, maybe somewhere around a dozen things on the backlog. They're all things that we've been talking about for years. But I, see, I think the, the difference was, Literally, for years. Well, right, and, the, and that came out on the patch, but I think the, um, you all had the context of being at the leadership seminar and, right. and yeah. saying, all right, we've got to do this. Trust and together. that's where Tahiri's right. point earlier about failing to communicate fully about and, where that was coming and from. And after, yeah. you know, after I went back and read it, it's like, oh, you know, I get, you know, and what's here funny. are a few tweaks, and now this is fine, but then you can see people still don't quite get it. Yeah. It's also well, what, what's funny is that there was a change process that was introduced to us in that training as well that was like a sort of like, here's how you manage change in a servant leadership model, and we f didn't follow that for that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I mean, I think there's a lot of like, we're still figuring out how to yeah. do this, right? Yeah, and, and figuring out, because because uh, I think Thierry said this early, also earlier in the session, there's there's a bunch of stuff there, and there's a bunch of stuff that, that is, was applicable. There's also stuff that wasn't applicable in the in the stuff. And so sort of sorting through, because it's a, it's a set of words and tools and whatever, and, and you can look at it and be like, oh, oh God, it's a mismatch of, but like, so trying a couple things, and it turns out a couple things really resonate. A couple things were like, Maybe, like I could see, but maybe it's not that important. And, and it's like, I think as we stumble through this, we discover, okay, well, this bit did apply, this bit didn't apply, and like that's part of... That's and we'll part figure of, out how to make it the communities, yeah. right? So to follow up on Monty's comment about the possibility of providing infra, in, or instructions for a company contributing to OpenStack as opposed to an individual, are there any areas of the culture and policy and politics and general superstructure of OpenStack that are specifically excluded from the stewardship working group remit for research and recommendation? I don't, I don't think so. I think that, I think that the, the stewardship working group's goal in life is to be helpful to people. So in the areas where people need help, then those are the areas, because this isn't a, this isn't a binding kind of, you know, like it's not a thing over off the side restructuring things. It's somebody says, hey, not really sure what to do about this particular thing. So some people will go and talk about it and, and think about it. And that there may be productive results out of that. There may not be. But I think that in any of these cases, as long as it's related to our, you know, our technical community, even, even broadly, like, because talking to, talking to managers at companies is clearly not actually, I don't think the stewardship working group should talk to managers at companies. Like that's outside of, but, but, brainstorming and researching some ways in which that might be done that can be bubbled up to the people who that is their job, I, I think would be, and then those people can take that, take that information or, or not as they, as, they, as they see fit. But, but at least, because a lot of these things are things where like, it would be really great if somebody thought of a way to do that. And then you're like, crickets, you know, <laughs> like, like nobody is, like nobody, so it's, it's more of a forum to, to, to bolster and support people that want to think about some of those harder problems.
part of the issue there was also that we did not have a venue for those kinds of discussions before. And to Brian's point earlier, I think if we had more shared context and he had a better idea of what the what are the things we're trying to to achieve? He would have had trusted us more by default, rather than, and so I'm happy to. I hope that we we'll, we'll, we set up tools that we will be able to use to share more context about all those initiatives, okay. so that they they are not like taken uh, uh, first of all as as a uh, potential attempt to do something wrong, but rather to do something <laughs> right. And I hope we'll. We build that trust that's been a bit broken. And, I, and I, I mean, if I could pick a tagline for our T-shirt, it would be like, you know, we're here to have the conversations you're afraid of having, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> like, uh, th there's like, the, the thing is, is like, w if we can't create a supportive space where everyone feels like they can come and talk about the really hard stuff, then, then I would be upset if, if, if we still existed in a year. So. so. Well, actually, you guys kind of, and I'm feeding back, uh, you guys hit part of the, uh, the issue just recently. Uh, there are like three questions that feed into this whole issue of uh, you guys are exercising the process, but you manage to do it improperly with the um, Python 3. And there are other times where I've seen not quite enough power, follow through. And so maybe perhaps as an organization, you come up with a checklist of what we need to do to make sure we've, we are actually proactively not only walking the walk, but advancing it. So, have you scheduled a post, will you schedule a postmortem of how you can do it better in the future? Uh, there are things along the lines of when there are TC de de decisions, especially hard ones that have lots of angst built around them. If there's a process that says, we do this, we do this, and this is our follow through, lead by example. So whether a decision is a yes or a no, what are the next steps to maybe turn it into something positive or continue the positive? Yeah, so I don't, I was personally frustrated with the outcome of the decision, but only by timing. So I, I, I don't feel like the Python goal discussion was actually a failure. Um, the, the, the initial discussion around the goal process itself was also a bit tense but resulted in a successful outcome. Right. And so uh, we, we do have conversations, you know, retroactively about what went on and, and how we can do better next time all the time. That's how all of the people involved in the group started and, and know, we did in the together stewardship working getting, group meeting following yeah, the email yeah, reaction. Yeah. We actually did. So, yeah. so. There, did, and I want to bring, there's a, there's a thing that, uh, there's a sort of set of potential uh, uh, you know, tools that um, we 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 didn't uh, poke at to uh, this time that that Colette mentioned in terms of 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 prepping for rolling out change, and, and one of the things about that in, involves uh, sort of some some clear uh, clear descriptions of of the the thing, but also what the outcomes like how how the outcomes can be. Uh, can can be measured later on and stuff like this. Why I think that's so so yes, like that has that happened and and also I think there's potentially some 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 more structured things that we can we can try in in the future to to enhance uh, and 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 make it even more transparently clear that that those things are are going on, um, which is I, I think really important. I also want to point out before I let Thierry uh, uh, cut in um, that. Uh, the thing that Colette was talking about, about there being a, a safe space to dig into the hard problems, um, you, you glanced over uh, a, a, a known hard problem that we all in this room know uh, is the one that you glanced over, um, and it, it was uh, obliquely referenced in the earlier session, and we are, in fact, not at a space where I'm going to reference that by name on, on the thing because it will derail us at the moment. We need to be able to to, to dig in, to, we need to be able to have more productive follow-up conversations about that without, without 
everybody needing to tiptoe around the, those sorts of things. So I think that's a really great example of exactly why doing work on being able to have a, a safe place to talk about the, and not necessarily the safe room to talk about that problem, but we even have a hard time right now talking about talking about that problem, right? And I know that's super meta, and like I know we love to talk about talking about talking about problems and then make a structure in which we talk about talking about the structure that we're gonna talk about the problem. But, but in, in this particular case, I think it really shows systemically that we, 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 we do have a loss of, of how to really functionally dig into that. And, and I, I think that's a, um, hopefully one of the things that we will, we will work on and, and, and come up with some, some suggestions. I like, I like to call that cultural avoidance in action. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone? We're getting pretty close to time, and so I'm going to say the word Macbeth. So is that okay? Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. What are you going to say? Macbeth. Um, we have five minutes left. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to answer, uh, like, uh, compliment to. Uh, the question that was just asked. I, th I don't think you should look into the goals and principles stuff as an example of the way things will be going in the future. It's more the thing that the things that we had in our back backlog that we never got around to do, and that that leadership training actually opened our eyes in the necessity to make it to advance really fast. It's not as if the goals and the principles were uh, uh, started at. Yeah, they were already queued up. Then they were, yeah. they were already things that Monty wanted to write forever or that uh, me and, and, and Doug wanted to push at the release management team level. It's just that we, the, the, the training basically spurred us into action, say, well, we should actually like take a step backward and try to improve things rather than bitch about things not getting in the, wrong, in the right direction. And, and it also highlighted some ways that we could do something that we had been talking about for a long time. So I'd had the idea of having release goals um, you know, back a year ago. And uh, some of this stuff about communication and communicating expectations and clearly documenting and having the contract go back and forth with agreement um, that's built into the goal process that came directly out of the, the training sessions and the material that was there. So um, it, it made it uh, not obvious, but it gave a path to create a system where I wasn't seeing a way to do that before. So, so, sorry, there you go. Um, one question sort of around the health of the community. Like, for example, like at a, at a company, or at a, I've been in at one, in it, where they send out these like quarterly like surveys of all the employees to gather how the feedback is uh, going on. Like, it's sort of, I don't know, it gauges the company's culture or whatever, yeah. or emotional state, I don't know. Yeah. Those kind of things, uh, that could, like, oh, and is there anything thought about for, like, OpenStack for that? I, w I would love to have a cultural measurement that right. we come up with. I don't know. It's maybe something similar to what the, yeah, yeah there's but a it's, it's, HR is already. And it's going to be based on participation, much like voting. Right? Okay. Yeah. It's difficult in our community because the, the constituency is moving so fast. Like, the, like, if you just survey developer per developer, I would say we have, uh, like a lot of people had to submit one, two, three patches, mm. and those change a lot. And so, in in the end, you, it's difficult to have those kind of okay. uh, of analysis. But I think it's still valuable. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I would just still, not put too much trust in the metric. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another question was like a, just an anonymous Dropbox for like people to like ask questions or try to. I don't know. It's something seems like a form or something that could let people complain on that would be like just anonymous somewhat. That's uh, that's like you just ping me on IRC. Okay, <laughs> I mean, just making it like a yeah. known place where people can just be like, I have problems with X, Y, Z, and blah, blah, the, blah. The team does have an IRC room, too. But is it logged yeah. and it, stuff? It is logged, it, yeah. It is logged. Yeah, so I think that that's right. the... But, th I mean, I can take a PM any time. But, but, but part of what I'm trying to do is sort of get some of these conversations out in the open okay. and develop the skill sets so that we can have them together so that we're not so afraid of one another anymore, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, to your point about goals and potentially being a failure or whatever, one of the things I pointed out in the earlier session was there's a, there's a distinct lack of trust in the community that I think I want to sort of, it, it involves bringing it forth before we, before we start to heal it, right? And, and um, sometimes you want to start those conversations in private, but you need to totally. get them into the public yeah. sphere at some point. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, to repeat that, you, I'm not going to repeat Rocky's, it. Rock, Rocky's proud of us. Rocky said nice things. She's specifically proud of Doug. 
I'm proud of it. I said I wanted to congratulate the group for getting the the goals and and other aspects out there because now you have a way forward to actually find the way to get the better participation. Thank you, and it, it is definitely meant to be iterative, and, and we had suggestions this week about improvements that we could already make to that process that we'll, we'll be working on. Uh, probably not next week, but maybe the week after that. <laughs> so I've been uh, back here, apologize for fighting jet lag. I've been really enjoying the panel discussion. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about what's on the agenda next uh, for the stewardship working group and what people can do to, to help and join with that. So it, it's going to largely be determined by who shows up at our meetings, which I would love for everyone here to show up at. Hey, come uh, when, when and where are the meetings? Our meetings are on, uh, are they even Tuesdays? They're t every other Tuesday, and I don't One know if they're odd or even, and there was a whole thing about it. Yep. Um, at 1500 UTC in OpenStack meeting three. Uh, we also have an IRC channel that's OpenStack hyphen SWG. Um, and I'm Gothic Mind Food on IRC, if you're curious but, but nervous. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, cool story, don't be nervous. Um, uh, and so um, a few of the things that got thrown out the cross-project session were creating um, uh, some resources on some of the sort of modules of learning that happened at that training. There will be another training. Um, the foundation has, has agreed to fund one more um, this next coming calendar year. So we will be doing another training. Uh, but I also want to make it much more available to the community in general, probably in more bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to be working on that. Um, I think we've decided that we want to untangle the list on our etherpad for the cross-project session was untangle the ball of crazy that is our communication system and try to make it like more efficient and better and easier for people to use. Um, so I think that's been suggested. And, and that was specifically, since that's kind of shorthand in the room language that we used to write that down, that, that was specifically about how to make sure people see the messages that they need to see. Right. So the volume on the mailing list is really high, people are all in different time zones, and so asynchronous communication is challenging. Yeah. And specifically coming up with some ideas to improve those, you know, that part of the communication. Yes. So I'm getting nasty looks from the back. So, I think so let's it. say this conversation just also, started. Also, whatever you show up with at the meeting and want to do. No, so let's just say so this conversation just started. Please come to the meetings. And you know where to find these folks. You know where to find me. And we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.